Welcome to Physics Can Be Fun with me, Stephen Thomas. Today we're talking about rates of reaction and the factors which affect it. And I thought we'd choose a nice reaction known to everyone around the world, and that is the burning of wood. Basically, wood is a carbohydrate. Carbohydrate. Hydrated carbon. So if you took a piece of carbon and you added OH and H, OH plus H makes water with carbon, hydrated carbon. And you took lots of these, N times that, and we added oxygen to it. What's going to happen is the carbon's going to lose its water. So we're going to get H2O. And then the carbon is going to join with the oxygen and form CO2. CO2. And it's going to give off heat in the process, so we could say this is an exothermic reaction. Well, we all know a lot about rates of reaction, how to get our fire to burn strongly and quickly. So I'm going to show you how we use our intuitive knowledge of fire making, and in fact we're demonstrating that we have and understanding that the nature of the reactants is important, the surface area is important, the concentration in a solution, well we don't have any solutions, but if we were using a fire lighter we would con want concentrated solution, the pressure of the gas or the concentration of the gas, the temperature of our fire affects how fast it burns, and a catalyst affects the fire as well. Now, because this is indoors, I've got a little rocket stove. Basically, what it has is basically it's a tin with inside a tin, and then we can light it through here, and we can put our fuel in here, and it burns out the top. So, I'm going to show you what I mean by we have an intuitive knowledge of how to make fire. We always start with our fluffiest, lightest stuff first. So, that is, we know that that's going to burn well. Then we might take some slightly less fluffy stuff. This is some coarser or harder tissue paper. We would then put that next. Maybe then we would use some newspaper, which is not quite as um, fluffy and absorbent. We put that in. Then are we going to put our thick twigs or are we going to put our thin twigs next? There's our thick twigs. Here's our thin twigs. Well, I think we all know that we're going to throw in our thin twigs next. So we've got our thin twigs. Next, we put in our thicker twigs. And last of all, we're going to put in our real big boys. So then, finally, we're going to put in some larger twigs. Now there's an intuitive reason why we do that. So let's just light it and see if in fact it does work. Uh, we could use matches or we could use this little fire lighter here. Let's light our rocket stove. Poke that in there. The moment we see smoke coming out the top, we know that our fire is burning. And there is our rocket stove. Now, the thing, the beauty about a rocket stove is look how clean burning it is. This is indoors, it's, it's contained, but look how little smoke is coming from our rocket stove, and you can actually see it burning inside there. And then if we wanted to get our rocket stove, I'll put a few more twigs inside there so that it can burn. If we wanted to give our rocket stove a bit more of a boost, I've got here a PC power supply, which has got a fan in it. And if I turn this around and attach it to my PC power supply and we switch it on, it blows into here and we can increase the rate of our reaction. So now our fire is burning much more strongly, and I think you'll be able to see the flames coming out the top there. So that addition of air makes our fire burn 
very much more strongly. So, that is demonstrating our intuitive knowledge of fire making, which all of us have been doing. Again, the rocket stove is just an insulated, it's actually got cement or concrete between one can and another, and that keeps the temperature in here high so that our reactants stay warm and this keeps the chemical reaction going. In fact, if I now want to put out my rocket stove, I could simply take some bicarbonate of soda, put it in here, and that kills the flame because it produces carbon dioxide. So, if you're stuck for a fire extinguisher, you can use your bicarb to put out a flame. Because what it does is when the bicarb hits uh, the fire, it gives off carbon dioxide and that carbon dioxide is a fire extinguisher. So that's like your own homemade fire extinguisher. Let's get this out of the way so we don't have to look at the smoke. Now, like I said, when we are building a fire, we are drawing upon our vast experience of science, in fact, and the factors which affect our reaction. In this case, we want our fire to burn at a greater rate. So what do we do? We know that the nature of the reacting substance is important. In other words, our type of wood. Light, soft wood will burn quickly. Hard wood is going to be hard to light, will burn much slower. So we know that the nature of our reacting substance is important. Surface area of a solid. We can't change the concentration of a solid, but we can change the surface area. So for example, if you take a piece of paper, all the paper is in contact with the air, so that when we light it, when we light paper, it burns very readily because it can easily get the oxygen and the carbon to combine. Whereas take something like a piece of wood, how is the oxygen going to get inside the wood? It can't. It can only react with the small little surface of the wood. So therefore, we always start with wood that's got a lot of surface for its volume, and that is we start with small pieces of wood because most of the, the small piece of wood is in contact with the air. So small pieces or thin pieces of wood burn much better than thick pieces of wood. So surface area is important. Concentration of a solution. We do not have a solution, but if we were using a fire lighter, we'd want a concentrated fire lighter, not one mixed with diluted. It would obviously not burn as well. Then the pressure of a gas. Now, we... When we used our, um, our supply, our computer power supplies fan, we were in fact affecting the concentration of the oxygen. Not so much its pressure, it's working at atmospheric pressure. But as the fire consumes the oxygen around it, it runs out of oxygen. And what our fan does is keep supplying and keeping the concentration of oxygen to our fire high. And that is why a rocket stove combined with a fan makes a wonderful indoor cooking um, piece of equipment. So we can, have, and if we could compress our oxygen and our gases together, we would push the molecules closer together and force them closer to the surface of the wood, and therefore we would get a much greater combustion as well. And this is what occurs inside the piston and cylinder of, say, your motorbike. It squashes the vaporized petrol together, and because they squash together, they can react. They're close together to react. They can find each other much quicker, and they can react much easier. So the pressure. Then what a rocket stove does is it has a sleeve around the fire. Now, most open fires, let's say three-stick fire, they lose a lot of their heat, and you need heat to keep a fire going. So what a rocket stove does, keeps the heat inside that can, that column, and it, because it contains the heat, your wood that you're feeding in quickly catches light and burns. You don't have to start it from very cold. The wood is already heated up, and all the heat in there causes our reaction to, to occur. And then a catalyst is something that speeds up a reaction without itself being used up. 
we haven't used a catalyst in this reaction. Now, what is the theory behind what we just said? Why is the nature of the reacting substances important? Well, there's always a graph that seems to come into um, play when we talk about reactions and reaction rates. And it's a graph that looks something like this. We have time here and we have potential energy here. And what happens is substances start with a certain amount of energy and you have to start them off with a little bit of activation energy. That was us lighting the fire. We've got to get them and then they tend to give off energy so they end up with a lower potential energy than the reactant. So here's your potential energy of your reactants, here's your potential energy of your products, and this is the process as time passes. As time passes, your, your um, wood loses a certain amount of energy, we call that delta H. And because it loses that energy, we could say delta H is negative. But to start our fire, we've got to give it a little bit of activation energy, or EA, subscript A, activation energy. So always when wood burns, it first has to be activated. It has to be activated, in fact, to lose its OH and H. So that takes energy to rip off the hydrogen and the OH to form water. Now, once we've ripped that off, and that's where this energy bump comes in, that's what that little bit of heat to start off with, then it goes to form a product that is of a much lower potential energy. And so it now gives out heat, and that heat can go back into activation energy. That's why we don't have to continually have to keep supplying it with a fire lighter, a match, or a um, propane burner of some sort. It's now generating its own energy, which it gives off delta H negative exothermic, and that energy goes back into overcoming this little energy bump that it requires at first. So again, where, why do we require a little bit of energy at first? Well, we've got to rip the water off the carbon to form uh, water. That leaves our carbon exposed and ready to act with the oxygen. And when carbon reacts with the oxygen, it gives off heat and that then turns it into an exothermic reaction. So, like I say, you'll see this graph quite often. Potential energy versus time or duration of your graph in seconds. And this, when the products end at a lower potential energy, we call that an exothermic reaction. If they end at a higher potential energy, we call that an endothermic reaction. And if you have a catalyst, what it does is it creates an alternate pathway. So here would be the pathway if you had a catalyst. You would reduce the activation energy required for the reaction to occur. So here, if you had a catalyst, it lowers the pathway, it lowers the activation energy, and it makes our reactants much more able to react. Because for the reactants to react, they have to have enough energy to get over that amount of potential energy. So by giving it a, a match or a flame, and without a catalyst, it's got to get over a bigger hump, so therefore it requires more energy, and therefore that slows the reaction down as well. There are fewer reactants that have that amount of energy or heat or temperature to react. Because smoke is the result of a low reaction rate due to a coldness in the fire, and therefore you get, you get incomplete combustion, and that smoke is unburnt wood that's been vaporized. It first has to be carbonized or turned into the wood first has to be broken apart, turned into carbon, and you see that carbon coming off. But there's not enough energy for it to react with the oxygen, form CO2. So there's incomplete combustion, 